<laughs> What's that? Oh, I'm feeling the water. Whoa, this is so cold, guys. Guys, this is when last have you seen a ladder? Ladder? <laughs> oh. Guys, yo. And look in the road, we have an animal. That People. Mickey, look, look at this. Oh, this don't top, oh. speed up. Lada. It's a calf, it's a calf. <laughs> <laughs> we have those in our country. What's wrong with the Lada, man? Hey, Lada. Look at the beehives. See the beehives? Look up there. Right here, right here. It takes more than 17 years to construct this monastery. Oh. So that's the first one. The second one, it's written that there are uh, more than 140 like small places for priests. Before priests pray, stay there and they pray, they wrote uh, books. Okay, because of that, this place is called caves in a monastery in the caves. And then the third one is called Gerard because when translate, you know the spear which people found it. Christ, Jesus Christ, yeah. okay, during the crucifixion. The, uh, that uh, spirit, they, um, it stayed here more than 500 years, okay? And then after that, during the wars, during the 13th century, during the war between Armenia and Mongols, they take it from here, and now it's in Echmeltin, and which is considered to be a holy city, okay? The mother cathedral is situated there, and many monasteries and churches are situated there, okay? So, the exact date of the construction of this monastery still is not known, but according to the inscription, it was constructed 4th century after adopting Christianity in all Armenia. So, how Christianity started to spread in Armenia? Actually, just remember the name, I will tell you one by one so you can understand about what I am going to tell you about. So, remember the name of Khosrov the I? He was the king during that period of time. And then one man whose name was Anak. He came from the Rome and during the war he killed our king. Okay? And then king's son killed all his family, that Anak's family. Only one of his son could escape because the lady who was taking care of him took him from here and they take him to Rome. So that that man whose name was Gregor, he could survive. And then when he grew up, he came to Armenia together, uh, together with 33 uh, women. Okay, they wanted to spread Christianity in all Armenia. And then when King, our King, the name was Tertar III, he knew that this man, man's father, killed his father. He wanted to kill him as well. But they threw him in a deep dungeon. That deep dungeon is more than 5.6 meters deep. No light, nothing. At first they used that place as a prison and people who made sin, they stayed there and they died because no light, no nothing to eat, no water. Okay, understand? So the same happened with Greek the Illuminator. They put it in there and forgot about it. Okay, he stayed there more than 14 years. Then in his dream, our king saw a dream. And then God came and told that if you don't accept Christianity, you will become a pig. Of course, he didn't become a pig, but he had a very bad illness. And his sister, he, she saw a dream, and God came and told that only that Gregor the Illuminator could cure him. So they went that place, tried to find. But of course, they thought that he is already dead because nobody could survive from there. Okay, but fortunately, they found him. And so after that, uh, more than 40 days, that Gregor the Illuminator he spread Christianity in all Armenia. And then after that. King adopted Christianity in Armenia, so Armenia considered to be the first country which adopted Christianity in 301. And then they destroyed all pagan temples, instead constructed monasteries and churches. So this one is considered to be one of the first monasteries in all Armenia. Actually, this place is also called the Holy Place.
because there are many legends about that. So at first, when we came in near the entrance, you see that people throw the stones to the holes. So if any stone will stay there, so their wishes will come true. That's the first one. The second one, I want to tell you about this big stone. So this stone is telling that when many people came here and they pray, they stayed here. And then one big stone, it's written that from the sky, this stone came here. And see, what's the what's happened that this stone when it came it didn't hurt anybody so can you imagine many people stayed here and this stone came from the sky and, and didn't hurt anybody so because of that this they called this place holy place then the third one inside of the monastery there is a water something like a small spring coming from the ground many people even Armenians when they come here they take bottles with them to take this water and they give to their relatives and family members because it's cured there. if you have any sickness. illness or sickness yes it can cure you oh, feeling the water Whoa. this is so cold guys this is the water they have been talking about lions it symbolizes two of the most powerful men in their dynasties, these two lions. So means they are like a servants of the country. They are checking that each man in their dynasty, they should be made very powerful to protect the country from the enemies. The eagle shows like uh, every uh, man in their dynasty. And then here you can see the owl. Owl is the enemy. You see that uh, the legs is like this, like very afraid. So it shows that this dynasty was very powerful during the 12th to 13th centuries. And here in this side you can see two men. In this side. You see it? Yeah. When Zacharias, the name of the dynasty, they came to power, they bought this monastery, okay, from the last dynasty. Then when they bought, they made their like symbols and uh, walls of the monastery. And after Zacharias, uh, the Russians, when they came to power, they made their symbols on the walls of the monastery. So this one is the uh, symbols of Russian um, dynasty. What's that?